Welcome everybody. Today is July the 8th. This is the Board of Commissioners special meeting and we um, are called to order at 1 p.m. Will City Clerk please call the roll. Mayor Black. Present. Vice Mayor Hodges. Here. Commissioner Weinstein. Here. Commissioner <coughs> Andrews. Here. Commissioner Douther. Present. Well, the first item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, it is uh, about three minutes and it's for anything that is not on the um, on the agenda and we will begin Robert press is that working Robert Preston, 425 South Bayshore Drive, Madeira Beach. A little off of what's going with the city. I was in Home Depot yesterday, had to buy a refrigerator because mine was on the fritz. And filling out the paperwork where to deliver Madeira Beach. Well, you provide us a lot of entertainment. It's not coming over? Okay. So we're, I was at Home Depot and they said, um, boy, you provide us a lot of entertainment over there in Madeira Beach. And I says, well, I wished it was entertainment, but it's not. It's, uh, it hurts our citizens of the city and the city itself, what's going on over there. And I just kind of left it at that. So you have a lot of decisions to make. And I've been watching this for quite a while. Our city is currently in turmoil again for multiple reasons and what seems to me is that personal vendettas or dislikes for some group or another group or personal agendas get in the way of making the city better. And you five people are here to make this city better. You need to leave your personal agendas at home. You need to leave your animosity towards others at home. And you need to do what is best for the city. It would be a shame if the state walked in and said, geez, though, you no longer are commissioners. We're going to run the city for you because you don't seem capable of doing that. And that's what it seems like. So what I would all of you like to think about is what is best for the city not you personally not small some tiny group but the city as a whole thank you or anyone else wish to speak the floor is now closed for public comment First item on the agenda is selection of a candidate for city manager. Madam Mayor, if I can have HR coordinator Ms. Paulson to the staff presenter table to bring you up to speed with regards to a couple of the conversations she's had with um, the candidates. Um, obviously, we're here today because of the conversation that staff has had with the number one candidate that withdrew their candidacy and then the individual that the board considered appointing to the interim role has also declined. Ms. Paulson was directed to reach out to individuals that were still on the list for consideration for city manager, and then ultimately um, other individuals that were inter interested in the interim role as well, so she can bring you up to speed on those conversations. 
and then staff is requesting from the board how they wish to proceed. Good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. I did speak with all three of, um, actually I reached out to all the other candidates from the top five. Um, Andrew Butterfield was not interested in continuing. He, he removed his application or withdrew it. Um, Lyndon Bonner is still very interested. He said he would, he would even consider just the interim if, if you didn't want him for the city manager. Um, James Drum is still interested, and uh, he could actually, all of them could start probably within a couple weeks. James Drum, though he's in Georgia, so he would need a little more time, I think maybe August 1st. But um, the other one was uh, Lawrence McNall. He's from Iowa, he was still interested, and he's going to be in Florida this week. Toward the end of this week, he will be in Florida. He let me know that, but um, I told him our meeting was today, so I encouraged them all to watch just so they could be informed. Uh, Lyndon Bonner is not available this week because he's at a Boy Scout camp all week. Um, so they, all three are still very interested and waiting to hear from, from you what you would like to do. Thank you, Karen. Madam Mayor, may I begin, please? Um, you know, in, in light of some of the recent news coverage that we've gotten in the city manager uh, search, um, coupled with the fact that we're hamstrung by this ICMA requirement, we're kind of finding ourselves in a little bit of a precarious pickle. Now, I'm concerned that if we couldn't reach a unanimous decision on Ms. Nooner, who was named on 80% of our ballots, how can we even think that authentically we can get a unanimous vote with somebody with 60% or fewer? Um, besides, if you read that email of withdrawing his name from Andrew Butterfield, it sums up exactly why Phil in this position has become quite a nightmare. So, in my opinion, we've got to kind of think a little bit outside the box, and that is why I brought up Dave Marzacano's name last meeting, and trust me, I think Dave would do an amazing job. But I also have a candidate that I'd like to have a discussion on, and that's Vince Tenalia. Um, Vince isn't going to apply for this job, especially with the publicity and the coverage that's get, that it's getting right now. He's not going to sit through hours of interviews for us, and he's not going to come here and have cookie and cake and meet the residents. Vince has a job, a great job, in a city, that, city that's much more stable than we currently are. But we all know what he's accomplished here. Um, personally, I worked with him on staff. Uh, he also served three of you as the city treasurer while also being the, the assistant city manager here. And I'm aware that he was the overwhelmingly first choice to succeed Mr. Crawford when he was let go. A couple more fun facts. Uh, we need to get a budget done. Vince vote, wrote, wrote five budgets here, and we are still cutting and pasting from Vince's past budgets into this year's budget. Um, we've received no grant money. R Vince has written or co-authored dozens of successful grants here that were won during his tenure. We need somebody to explain to our citizen, citizenry what effect this $15 million loan will have on them and their millage rate, and Vince can do that. And we are in desperate need of leadership in City Hall. Vince is a known quality, very well liked and respected by our staff in and around City Hall. Folks, here's the thing, Vince works. He doesn't talk a lot, he works. He's not political. He won't end up putting up with elected officials lurking around City Hall. But bottom line, he's not gonna put up with any nonsense, but he works. Folks, he's our guy, okay? I'd like to make a motion to offer Vince Tenalia the position of city manager for the city of Madeira Beach. Commissioner Andrews, have you had a, a talk with uh, Vince on this already? Um, I called him and uh, he recently became a first time dad and I congratulated him on that. I haven't spoken to him about the position. But I think, you know, my reason for doing this is um, we need somebody that we can plug and play and put in here right away. Um, you know, we need somebody that we can vote on unanimously. And I think that with what I just covered, with the experience we all have with him, um, if we can't vote on him unanimously, I, I'm pretty certain we're not going to find a candidate that we're going to. And, um, you know, hey, look, I, you know, I, all I can say is I'll get him to take my phone call, you know. So um, he probably ain't going to come cheap, but we're going to get – Somebody that could be our city manager here, a young guy, mid-30s, could be our city manager here for the next 20, 25 years. But if we don't go after him now, somebody else will pluck him up here soon, and we're not going to have another shot at him. So that's kind of my reasoning behind it. So, no, it's not a sure thing if we do vote yes, but at least we can get a call with him. 
Well, Vince uh, you know, did not apply, number one, so I would assume he's not interested. And number two, we did talk to him a couple years ago, and he was not interested then. Maggie, you talked to him while the, the job was still being occupied by Shane Crawford. You talked to him while, the, while his boss still was employed. You don't know when I talked to him. I know exactly when you talked to him, and stop it. Don't try to tell me that you didn't talk, talk to him when, he was, when Shane was still here. That was the whole plan, and you guys know it, and I'm not going to get into that. The point is... Point of order, Madam, Madam Mayor. We're asking for a second for that motion. Of I'll, sec I'll second the motion. Chairman, before you uh, take a roll or vote, you have to take public comment. I just want to remind you. Okay, floor is open for public comment. Robert, Robert Preston, 425 South Bayshore Drive, Madeira Beach. Um, this is the first I've heard of Vince coming up. Um, but from what I'm aware of, he did a very fine job at what he was doing. And if this vote for interim or city manager can be delayed for one day for a conversation to have with Vince to fit into the city, it may be well worth the discussion because he is a good person. He's young. He lives around here, and he knows the city in and out. And that would be a huge benefit to uh, what's going on right now. And I think that, uh, you know, I, we've delayed this long. If we had a contact with him this afternoon or whatever and asked him what he thought, uh, or you could even... Um, call a recess and give him a call right now and find out if he would be interested. And it may be worth the time in doing that for the short delay to do that. Just call him up, do a short recess, have the city manager call him and ask him if he'd be interested to filling the spot. I think you would all probably be pretty happy with the outcome. Thank you. Still asking for a second, right? Well, oh, oh, sorry. Public comment is still open. Does anyone else have a public comment? Public comment is closed. We have a first and a second. Any more discussion from the board? I, excuse me. I think that would be a good idea, as Mr. Preston mentioned, that uh, we take a short recess and maybe make the phone call. You know, if not, we're right here. Then we can continue with the meeting regardless or whatever we need to do with the outcome of the phone call. And pardon me, Madam Mayor, I don't think that's appropriate. Um, the, take, the agenda is right here. So that's what we're looking at. So I think that we should take the vote. Thank you. I'm not interested in, making, in calling a reset. And I will say I have seen Vince at a number of functions over the past couple of years, and he has never expressed any interest at all. Job wasn't open, Madam Mayor. He's not going to express interest. He's not going to put in his resume. And he's got a job currently that he's not planning on leaving. I'm saying we go after him. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying we go recruit him. Remember, every kid in the state of Florida sends his game tape to the Gators because he wants to be their quarterback. They go after the guy that the University of Alabama wants and Florida State wants. This can be our first round draft pick. And Mr. Preston hit it right on the head. We, we don't have to call him now, and we're not going to call him until we have a vote and a unanimous vote. I'm not even going to waste a professional like that's time. My point is, what's it going to cost us a day? We can discuss this again tomorrow if he's not interested. But if he's interested and we have an opportunity to get him, we should be the first one in line trying to get his signature on a piece of paper. Thank you. Call the question, Madam Mayor, and ask for a vote. Will the city clerk please call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Called the question. Talks to the debate. Commissioner Andrews. Yes. Vice Mayor Hodges. Yes. Commissioner Weinstein. No. <clears throat> Commissioner Douther. No. Mayor Blunt. No. 
Madam Mayor, may I make a comment, please? Um, I have also looked at all the different uh, it, the candidates that we have left for the position of the city manager position, and I still, uh, I guess, go back to my, my very first call on this for Mr. James Drum. Um, he comes to us with a, a very good, solid reputation, and that's what I said when we discussed it to begin with. Actually, Ms. Nooner was my second pick, but James was my first. I think that he is a very solid person. I think that he would regard our city with a challenge. I think it will be a challenge for him, and I think it will be a, a very good, uh, solid relationship. I think that he certainly has been with cities, as most all city managers have, that have been very divisive, perhaps, um, or split commissions, and I think that's healthy. I don't think that that's a, a bad thing at all, uh, because we all are individuals and we're all trying to serve our community in the best way that we know. So I would certainly, um, I, I did certainly look at uh, Mr. Bonner's um, application again uh, and his resume, uh, and since Mr. Butterfield obviously checked out, he was not on mine, but I would like to make a motion to I uh, have Mr. Dre James Drum to have Mr. James Drum be asked to be our new city manager. Um, approval to be, how do you call that city attorney? Um, the approval of the contract or whatever you determine, you, you discuss that, is that? Uh, you would make a motion to choose uh, the person's name uh, for city Again? manager. Um, based upon a negotiation of a contract. Okay, based on the negotiation of the contract, and also our human resources person, uh, Karen, did um, advise me that she had spoken with Mr. Drum, and he certainly would be available um, before August the 1st. Mr. City Attorney, I'd like to ask a question. How can we make a motion before we actually all discuss this? Shouldn't it be Should there be a motion, and then there'll be a second, and then there'll be discussion, and then a vote? But conversation from one commission, and then also making a, a motion. I mean, it's not really giving us a chance to really discuss this before a motion is being made. Any Well, typically you can make a motion, and then you take a second for discussion purposes, and then you have the discussion. Um, we've already had public comment, and then you can take a vote. A commissioner can make a motion at any time when there's an item on the agenda. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Yes. I don't understand why we're even having this meeting. Um, we have some very good candidates. We have very good candidates for the interim city manager, too. Um, when we originally had this meeting for the city manager, we all voted. And the second person in line after Michelle Nooner was Lyndon Bonden. Why in the world are we having this meeting now when the job would have been or could be his? I mean, he was the second one on the list. And so I feel like since the first one dropped out, it goes automatically to the second person, and that's Lyndon Bonner. And I don't understand why we're even bothering with this meeting at this time. We did determine that we would go back to the drawing board. You determined that we go back to the drawing board. A point we of took, order, we are we, discussing Mr. Drum. Excuse me just a minute here. A okay. point of order is only made through the mayor, not a commissioner. That is not You're true. wrong on that, please. Sorry. A right. point of order is made by anybody on the DS. Thank you. We made a vote. We took a vote. And the vote was that Lyndon Bonner was a second choice. And that should be where it is right now. And the vote was legal. It was done in an open meeting. We all voted. I, I just don't understand the rules that you make up as we go along. Floor is open for public comment. Floor is closed. Any more discussion? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're going, we've just nominated a guy to be our city manager who is named on 40% of the ballots, two out, of, two out of five ballots, okay? Two out of five ballots, 40% of the ballots, and now we're going to hand them over the city manager reins.
Okay? Uh, you know, there was only five candidates, and he was only named on two of the ballots. Um, okay. I just, just don't know. Since we had the meeting, I believe all of us have received this packet from James Rump. Did you all receive that? And that turned my decision because it just shows that he is, you know, he's, he can present well, he's done a lot, and that's, I mean, things change from day to day. So you get more information, you make different decisions. You are right. Things do change day to day. Meetings change day to day, too. Rules change day to day. That's why we're not getting anywhere. There are rules to be followed, and no one is following the rules. That's it. Bottom line. Any more discussion? Will the city clerk please call the vote? I'll wait. Wait a minute. So, it, Madam Mayor, it, you, <coughs> your second choice was Lyndon Bonner, but now you're going to bypass that choice and talk about a pamphlet that you got, a handout that you got, that now the guy is the greatest guy in the world. After you saw him in a meeting, now all of a sudden he hands you a glossy color picture, and all of a sudden he's now your candidate. <laughs> This is, know, this, is absolute, um, well, this is absolutely getting ridiculous. I wish we could be a little, just a little transparent. That's all I ask. Just a wee bit transparent. When we Let, pick, let's hold this up and say, now I like him. Wonderful. Wonderful. Can't pick, wait for the vote. When we pick candidates, sometimes you have a hard time deciding this one or that one. It's a 50-50. And then you might get one little piece of paper that changes your mind. Madam Mayor, you didn't like any of the candidates, remember? Can I read Mr. Bonner's? That has nothing, that's Madam Mayor, as a point of order, I think you asked the clerk to call the roll. City Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Weinstein? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Douther? Yes. Vice Mayor Hodges? No. Commissioner Andrews? No. Mayor Black? Yes. Next item on the agenda is selection of interim city manager. Madam Mayor, if I can have uh, HR Coordinator Paulson bring you up to speed on this item. On Friday, uh, on Wednesday last week, I was instructed to ask um, to call the remaining um, candidates from the FCCMA list to see if they were still interested, and also to ask any internal department heads if they were interested in serving as interim. We have um, three, the three that were the remaining. Two of them are here today um, that you can ask questions to are um, Robert Daniels and Tim Zizoff. And then Robert, John Drago said he would be available by phone if you had any questions for him. And, um, and so, I don't know if you want to go from there to hear about the inter internals, but I have those two. And, and also, as far as interim, um, uh, Lyndon Bonner said he would be interim if we needed it. And, and our two gentlemen are here today. And Ms. Paulson, if for the record, if you can state who the internal applicants were as well. Okay, yeah, the internal applicants that said they would be willing to step in for a time were Walter Pierce. Um, Frank DeSantis, and Clara Van Blargen. I was not under the impression I had talked to the city manager that we were going to be doing any kind of interviews. So I'm not sure. You are not, you're not conducting interviews, but if you had any questions of anyone that's present or any, they would be available to address any anything this the board wishes to talk about I don't think that's necessary do you need to take a break yes I need to take a break I need a short break all right we'll take a five minute break
The meeting is reconvened at 1.33. We currently have a motion and a second on the floor. Do we? Oh, no, I'm sorry. B, selection of interim city manager. Right. You don't have a motion yet. You can entertain motions. We need to take public comment before you vote. I'll be happy to start off. Um, I, I've just looked at the, for about the fourth or fifth time, the uh, three different resumes on Mr. Drago, uh, Mr. Zizoff, and Mr. Daniels. I've checked all the different things that I think are really important. I think that the FCCNA did a great job in sending our city manager the information to begin with, and I thank you for that again. Um, and I appreciate Mr. Zizoff and Mr. Daniels both being in the, uh, with us today. I don't really have any questions for either of the gentlemen because I understand from our human resources officer or human resources, Karen, that both Mr. Zizoff and Mr. Daniels would be available immediately. Is that correct? Or as of Wednesday morning, okay? Uh, Wednesday, the 10th of July. Uh, I did look, and I, I, I think that Mr. Zizoff certainly being in, in Seminole is a great, um, great assistance, you know, to, to be close and everything, and I, I appreciate your background. Uh, I do think that, um, and I did look at Mr. Drago also, but I, I especially concentrated my efforts and decided that I think that Mr. Robert Daniels is, is the man to be our interim city manager. Um, I've looked at his background, certainly his work and associations with beach communities, which I think will be very, very helpful to us, especially in this hurricane season that we're in and with all the other problems that we might have with the water. I think he's got um, excellent uh, credentials. Uh, I did see where with Boca Raton and the, um, especially the, uh, being the, with the fraud division uh, of the, the state of Florida, I think that's interesting, interesting background, um, interesting with the uh, police department and in various uh, capacities with the different cities that you've been associated with. Um, and if I'd like to make a motion, uh, I think it's a prudent thing to do. I think that uh, if Mr. Daniels would accept to come to us on a month to month basis, I think that at least a month, um, would be a very good thing. I think it's giving our city and our citizens and our staff the opportunity to, to look for these two, for the two gentlemen, if we are fortunate enough to get Mr. Drum and then Mr. Daniels as our interim, um, to see our city in different perspective than maybe we have been looking at our city before. So I think that it would be extremely advantageous to us and I'd like to, uh, to make a motion to appoint to, to ask Robert J. Daniels to be our interim city manager, effective Wednesday, July 10th, for a period of at least 30 days, at least. Do we want Wednesday or do we want Tuesday so he has a day to work with our current city manager? I'm sorry, what did you say? <clears throat> do we want Wednesday or do we want Tuesday so he has at least one day to work with our current city manager? Um, whatever. Well, I'll just say as soon as possible, not to exceed Wednesday. How about that? I, okay. I don't, you know. I can amend it to say tomorrow, uh, but I don't know if Mr. Daniels will be available tomorrow. I know that he would be available Wednesday. So I think I could leave it with Wednesday. Okay. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Floor is open for public comment. Floor is closed. Any further discussion? I mean, do do are we not even going to take into account? I mean, do we make motions up here without even thinking about the financial obligations that are due? Do we have no fiscal responsibility anymore? We're talking about a period of three weeks. Jonathan's leaving on Tuesday. James Drum can start on the first. Three weeks. Once again, I'm going to reiterate. 
if we do not have anyone in-house that can handle the workload for three weeks to get us just to transition us from one city manager to another, we have done an incredibly bad job of picking executives. Incredibly bad job. We should start from scratch and just blow the whole thing up because every manager knows that their job is to train the person to take their job and aspire to go to their boss's job. And we've got nobody, nobody that can hold onto the wheel for three weeks, but we're gonna have to go out and we have to bring, and, and sir, this is certainly nothing against you. Your, your, your credentials are impeccable. But now we're gonna have to move them over here, put them in a hotel for a month, okay? And we're, this is all on the taxpayer dime. And nobody's even mentioned that. Leo, let's just have a vote. Let's just push it through. Do we have any kind of costs associated with this? I mean, does anybody give us any fiscal impact before we make this vote? Don't the taxpayer deserve to know that? Um, yes, Madam Mayor, I have uh, mentioned that with Karen Paulson earlier with regards to the policy of when we bring in an individual from out of town, the responsibility of the city, and certainly it is on a per diem, it is because if Mr. Daniels you know, does accept, um, yes, there, there are financial obligations to that. Um, there's uh, lodging. Um, there's probably meals to a certain extent, but I feel that our city is, I, I feel that as responsible elected officials, our city needs to do this, and we need to do it now. I think that uh, Mr., I think that Commissioner Andrew's statements certainly are warrant, and I'm glad that you mentioned that because it did make me realize that certainly I did speak with Karen on this, um, but I think that it's well within our responsibility as elected officials and our obligation to our citizens and to our staff to bring in and to accept the person with what I think has, as you said yourself, um, excellent credentials. So yes, I have thought of that. And there certainly, will be a na there certainly will be a money tag with it, but I'm certain that it will be something that the city attorney and the appointed person will put together and we will all approve. Thank you. Anywhere, where in the budget is this money coming from, Commissioner Weinstein, and how much is it? We also have that obligation to our, our taxpayers too. Besides putting somebody in that chair, the obligation is to find out how much this is going to cost to be able to tell them how much it's going to be able to cost, okay? Again, nobody's outraged by the fact that we don't have anybody in-house that can hold onto the wheel for three weeks. Outraged. We should be outraged. I'm I would say right now the people we have who could be take over the reins have other things to do. Don't roll your eyes. They all have other things to do. I don't mean it that way. What I mean is there's a lot on their plates right now and we it's in Call our the question, best Mayor. Pardon me? Call the question, please. If you've already gotten public comment, please call the roll. I need to make sure there was I did public ask for public okay, comment. I'm sorry, just there checking. Was Commissioner Weinstein? Yes, ma'am. Commissioner Douther? Yes. Vice Mayor Hodges? No. Commissioner Andrews? No. Mayor Black? Yes. Congratulations, Mr. Daniels. Thank you Thank for being you, sir. here. Madam Mayor, if I may, um, I'm going to, if it, the board will indulge the city attorney to allow him and Mr. Daniels to meet and talk about the possibility of an employment, uh, interim employment agreement. And if the board is uh, willing, we would like to, and, and the terms and conditions can be worked out, we would like to amend the agenda for tomorrow's meeting to bring forward an employment agreement for consideration if the board would direct staff to do so. Yes. Do we need to lower that or just uh, You want a motion? Um, I, I would like a motion if the board would be so inclined to do so. Well, I would certainly like to make that motion since I was the one that brought it up to begin with um, that the Board of Commissioners convene their meeting tomorrow to include on the agenda, and I think the first thing on the agenda, because it's unfinished business, right? 
it could be. Okay. Um, to include the uh, discussion and the, or not the discussion, yeah, the discussion of an employment contract, which you will bring up for the interim uh, city manager. Thank you. I'll second. Any discussion? Floor is open for public comment. Floor is closed. Any more discussion? City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Weinstein? Yes. Commissioner Douthert? Yes. Commissioner Andrews? Sure, what the heck? Vice Mayor Hodges? Yes. Mayor Black? Yes. There being no further business. I, I have one thing I'd like to say. Okay. You know, when reading the, um, the beacon, um, the comment in here that Andrews, Mr. Andrews said, he told Douthert he owes Ms. Newman an apology. You know, Mr. Saunders turned down the interim because Mr. Andrews and Ms. Hodges both voted against him, you know. So I think he, they owe him an, an apology, you know, um, the same well, way he felt that well, I owed. Well, Commissioner Douthert. Let me finish. The same way that they felt that I owed, or Mr. Andrews owed, that I owed the other one an apology. So I just wanted to bring that to, to the forefront. We voted the way we felt. And we as did I not did the same way. But we didn't criticize as you did. As I did. I voted my heart. I'm not saying you didn't, but you also added some of your personal comments that could have been uncalled for. We voted the way we wanted to vote, or I should say I voted the way I wanted to vote. But I didn't criticize anybody. I want that to be known. I did not criticize anyone. And, I, and uh, I'm not sure why you want to do this, but um, I didn't criticize Wayne Saunders, and I didn't vote against Wayne Saunders. I don't know Wayne Saunders. What I wanted him to do was to come in here like these fellows did today so we could at least see who we're talking to. Mr. Douther, you pouted like a little baby and stomped your feet until you got your first choice. Okay. Water. What let's, you, uh, Maggie, he you're attacked, calling, you're he attacked me. Names. You're calling names. Chairman, let's uh, call to the order meeting. and remember the civility code. And if all business is done, perhaps we should adjourn. Yeah. The meeting is called to. Uh, um, Mayor, I would like to, um, before we adjourn the meeting, I would like to thank once again the uh, Trash Pirates for their exceptional performance and all the citizens for their performance on July the 6th at our cleanup. Clean up. I think we had a wonderful fireworks that was coordinated by our city manager's office. And um, I think all of our prayers should be with our planning director, Linda Portal. Thank you. It was a great show. The meeting is adjourned at 146.